I feel like we've been talking about this for decades. Back to the Future featured it 20 years ago. It still hasn't become a reality, but Google may just be the ones to do it. Well, you know, for 20 years it's been fiction, right? Um, it, it populates novels and movies, but, um, you know, it seemed fanciful. Well, what's happening now is actually not Google related. It is Larry Page related. The, the Google founder, the Alphabet CEO, is investing in this privately. And he's one of a number of entrepreneurs and, and visionaries who believe that technology now makes it feasible. You know, that advancements in things like uh, lightweight materials, electric motors, uh, computerized stabilization systems, autonomous navigation systems makes it feasible. And so Larry Page personally is backing two companies, which is kind of remarkable uh, by itself, um, both in Silicon Valley and there are a number of other companies as well around the world that are pursuing this dream of a flying car. So uh, what kind of technology might go into something like this? I imagine everyone's keeping all the secrets like under wrap right now. Oh, yeah. I mean, that's some good background. You know, my, my uh, co-writer, Ashley Vance, and I have, have basically been working on this for five years. I mean, this thing, the, all these efforts are, are very quiet, very secretive. Larry Page obviously did not talk to us for this story. We really had to ferret out the details of both companies, Z Aero and the newer one, Kitty Hawk. There's a company down in Santa Cruz called Joby Aviation that's working on a prototype. Um, you know, it's what you'd expect. I mean, they're obviously very complex safety systems, AI, navigation systems, uh, but really it's the, it's, it's the, it's the you know, it's the, uh, the flight systems, these tilt uh, rotors or propellers that have to allow these small aircraft, these flying cars, if you will, to take off and land vertically. So they go up and down, kind of like, like the Navy Osprey, although uh, hopefully a little uh, cheaper than that. Uh, and then, you know, propel you at, at, you know, 100 plus miles per hour uh, to your destination. It's this idea that maybe it could replace the commute, it could replace the car. It sounds crazy, but I think we're a couple of years away from seeing some of these pro prototypes in the air. So you know what's crazy is that is that Mahler sky car looked exactly <laughs> like a, a flyer in Star Wars. <laughs> that is crazy. Maybe that maybe Star Wars got the idea from seeing some Amazing. blueprints. Who knows? Um, how far along is development? You said in a couple of years we might see something. Do we know if there's been any kind of test flying anytime or anywhere in the California area? Yeah, well, you just mentioned uh, one of these efforts, uh, the Mahler Sky Car. So Paul Mahler is a professor at the, at the University of California, Davis, and he's been working on this for decades. And I remember going to conferences 10 years ago and always seeing his purple prototype aircraft on the floor. Um, you know, but, but, you know, that was like you're kind of canonical tinkerer who never really was able to fly. He, he probably spent about $100 million on the effort. Uh, he declared personal bankruptcy. But, you know, more recently it's become realer. And so I think there are some of these companies, so Larry Page's Z Aero does fly test aircraft out of the Hollister Airport about an hour and a half south. So prototypes are flying now. Um, there's a company called Terrafugia in Europe that has flown very, a very low altitude its prototype aircraft so it's happening um, but you know obviously this thing has to be more than hundred percent safe in some ways it's it's easier than an autonomous car because you don't have roads and traffic but in some ways right. obviously you're, you're you're working with gravity so it's more difficult yeah but a thirty thousand dollar tesla for example is much cheaper mm -hmm. than uh the the tfx you were just referring to is one hundred twenty thousand dollars for four seats what's the demand like for something that's just so expensive I mean, it's, it's, I mean, those numbers are hypothetical, right? It's probably too early to talk even about the market. Um, you know, it, it's, it's a vision of a different kind of transportation. It's, it's breaking the morning commute by flying in the unimpeded skies. And if it works, and obviously there'll be a cost curve and cost reductions, and it's probably better to think about an Uber-like service that exists in 20 years' time, uh, and we just pay per ride. And in that case, if it means getting out of traffic in the morning, the demand, you know, I think it, could, it would be unlimited. It might change the world.